During the NAIC, I hosted a bunch of friends to come together and play some Pokemon. I thought this would be a great chance to get some practice in for Yokohama whilst also watching a fantastic live stream across the weekend. And we thought what better way to challenge ourselves and have a bit of fun was going to be having a double elimination bracket running as the tournament was going on. So we pitted together what we thought were the seven best decks at the time, as well as throwing in United Wings, which have been doing well on day one of the NAIC stream to fight it out against each other for a mystery prize. Now, I will say that this was a party atmosphere. There probably are going to be some mistakes on some of these streams. Uh, we were also, you know, watching the stream along, having a good time and probably not putting our all into some of these games. So if there are going to be mistakes, I'm going to try and highlight them in commentary, but it's just going to be one of those things. This isn't necessarily the highest standard of play. It's just something we did for fun over the weekend. Cube Koga is always in the link in the description below where I will be trying to have even more up-to-date lists than the ones possibly even played in these tournaments. Uh, so that's always the best place to check out our lists. Now let's get into some games. So we have another round one game. We have Tim on the left, who's going to be playing Lost Zone Giratina. And we have Jono on the right, who's going to be playing the Chen Pao Baxcalibur deck. Definitely interesting. The, the build is going to be poker stop heavy with a 2 2 Palkia and a 1 1 Bib Barrel line. So we'll see how things go. Uh, Tim is pretty much known for playing Lost Zone Giratina. He's stepped away from the game for a few months, but is. Uh, was playing uh, Giratina in its pomp when it first came out in Lost Origins, so should be fairly comfortable with the archetype. And Chen Pao is basically a short straw, I think, <laughs> where no one particularly wanted to play the archetype, but here we go. See the coin flip and players are getting set up now. As Jono has the Manaphy start with a couple supporters in there as well. A mulligan start for the Giratina side of things. So we are trying a few interesting things with the uh, Chen Pao Bats Calibre list. We've got the Cancelling Clone, we're playing Cross Switchers, and yeah, we're playing the heavy Poker Stop build. So we'll see how that comes into the equation. Trying to give you that extra dig towards superiors, towards rare candies, that sort of thing. That's kind of the gist here, but has some downside potential, especially for supporters. If they get discarded, you have no way of recovering those sorts of cards. So that's the thing we have to bear in mind. Should be a fairly balanced matchup. Both players are able to play a somewhat one prizey and two prizey game. Both players have access to Radiant Greninja as well, which could be the difference. So these are things to track throughout the matchup as it looks like it's going to be the Chen Pao getting to go first. And I think the only thing missing from this hand was Water Energy, which is the shame. I'm not sure if um, Don is going to be able to get the Chen Pao into the active position, but still is going to go for the pretty textbook start of getting Chen Pao EX as well as a Friggy Backs. I think he has Irida for next turn. So he's actually got a pretty nice setup for the following turn. Just doesn't have many other actions here. So he's just going to pass things over to Tim, who has the Battle VIP pass start. Always a nice thing to have. And Giratina, also not a bad lead. You can try an Abyss Seek in a number of matchups. This is one where it's a little bit more risky because you know that Chen Pao has that burst potential. But I think especially because Tim didn't see a turn attachment into the Chen Pao early, he probably is expecting that there's no water energy in Jono's hand. So maybe it gives you a bit more license to even Abyss Seek this turn and just try and get on that mission to get towards your gates. Because I think if you're using your Tina's effectively, you can race Chen Pao pretty well. See double Comfe here from Tim. Pretty standard stuff. I think I saw some pivoting outs there. Going to start off with the Escape Rope. That actually opens up the line for Jono yet to get into his Chen Pao. So that's a little bit helpful. Tim's going to get his first flower selecting on the go. It's going to remove a Giratina. It's a 3-3 line of the Giratina in the list. And actually has a second escape rope. So it's back to where we started with the Manaphy in the mix. Jono obviously doesn't want to give up the Freaky Backs because there's always the threat of an early cram hit. So your Psychic Energy hit the Lost Zone. The list plays four copies of Psychic, three Water, three uh, Grass. And... I imagine there's a prized Radiant Greninja here based on what Tim's searching for, just grab grabbing another Comfey. Because uh, typically you like getting some Greninja in the mix. No chorus to speak of just yet, but at least we see a switch cart. Tim is going to go for the Comfey perhaps here. This will get them to three. Gonna get rid of a gate. Any help with supporters? Doesn't look like it, but it is going to be a turn attachment to the Giratina. And just a pass. So chose not to Abyss Seeking. I actually kind of like Abyss Seeking in that spot. 
Uh, it's a little bit risky, but I think you just wouldn't search out the second convoy. You would just grab second Tina and Abyss Seek. Four and three are quite different numbers, actually, because it gets you one flower selecting plus chorus away from seven, which means you just need like one pivot out. But now with only three, you need to get doing like continue doing the hokey cokey for a little bit more. We see the Irida candy backs, and it was actually a top deck of water for Jono, which is actually really helpful. So now he can get into his Chen Pao. We'll be able to shivery chill and get two more water, and we'll be taking a knockout this turn. So is initiating that race, which is really nice. So, definitely wants to get the momentum here. Immediately puts two onto Chen Pao. I believe there's an Ultra Ball as well to debate here. And it's going to get rid of the Cancelling Cologne as well as the Iono. I think Cologne is pretty important when you know that you have Greninja possibility with um, with these lower hit point Confes. But the rest of the hand is pretty good for Jono, so I understand why. And getting the backup Palkia... Definitely a reasonable option here. As we pass back over to Tim, is able to get another flower selecting in. Definitely taking their time on this choice. Going to be uh, a super rod. We see a path come into play, which is pretty interesting, actually. Could be a great way to slow Jono down. Jono was able to keep the Irida, but this list actually doesn't play <laughs> Lost Vacuum. It's one of the greedier things about this list. We're just playing three copies of... A Pokestop, which is getting punished in, in this moment, unfortunately. Jono now eyeing up a few different options here from the Irida. I think already had access to Superior, so might just be trying to... Yeah, wow, really stumped by this path from Tim. Bit of a panic play, but seems to be working out for him. Jono holding on to a Luminion. Not having the option of that Irida, or sorry, the uh, Iono that was in his hand with his Ultra Ball last turn. I kind of like actually getting rid of the fish with his last Ultra Ball. Obviously, it makes sense now with the path, but you should expect Giratina to play path, to be honest with you. And having the Iono option, even though you've just taken a prize, uh, I guess with Tim's hand size, you'd never want to Iono. So I understand the logic here. Could John have ever got a piece? Oh, interesting. So I think he searched for Switcher, then just got rid of it <laughs> with his Superior. And we'll just continue to Hailblade here. Obviously, the Bat's Calibre is still online. So John are going to even prize cards and passes back over to Tim. It was four in the zone now. Gets the Hisuian Heavy Ball. So can, yep, as expected, the Greninja was prized. That can now be retrieved. It's not currently online. Actually, he prized a ton of his water energy, I think, <laughs> which is pretty frustrating. I guess there is a mana feed developed already, but Greninja can be a great attacker in this matchup. We do see a selecting a Roxanne's going to find its way into the zone, and it was because it was up against a Chorus. And with this, Tim will be getting to 7. So he might be able to respond on this Chien Pao. And Prina being actually in a pretty decent position, especially with the path developed, it's still going to be a headache for Jono. It all depends whether or not Tim has access to gates and more pivot options in hand. I think there are two gates sat in Tim's hand from what I could see there. So the other priority for Tim really would just be, can he get another Giratina V established? Because he's going to be swinging with this one and then just kind of hoping that it tanks <laughs> from there. If you can get access to another ball search card, you'd be in really good shape. Yeah, I see gates and I see switch carts. So I think Tim is just going to go in with his V-Star here. And hope that thanks to how frustrating that path of the peak was for Jono last turn, that he's still in good shape. And that this one Giratina can take a whole chunk of prize cards. I think his hand doesn't really take him many other places, so... It's kind of got to be what he goes for here. Uh, isn't able to concealed cards there, though, because <laughs> there is a path in play. Yeah, it looks like they have figured this out. So we'll take the two cards back. Good to see that someone's paying attention. Uh, yeah, they hadn't... Uh, uh, Tim can get that grass energy back, though. Regardless, we are going to see the switch cart here. So Tim's actually down a grass energy. That should be in his hand. But regardless, he's going to loss zone a grass and a psychic and can take two prize cards here. Going up to 9 in the Lost Zone as well. And Jono just drawing bricks here. 
really not given much. Does have a water energy, so could rule the region and get a bounce to the stadium the old-fashioned way. <laughs> uh, but it's giving up another two prize Pokemon for Tim, because he's still holding on to Gates, I believe, so... Uh, yeah, definitely a reason to want the vacuum back in the 60. You're seeing now just how painful it can be. Does Tim have enough Psychic and Grass Energy remaining in the deck to be able to form this uh, Mirage Gate here? We know he prized... I think he prized like all three water. It looked like a lot in there. And that could be the thing holding him back. He does have a Chorus in hand. So it's possibly de just debating whether or not he should Gate or Chorus first. So actually we're all good. We have Psychic. We have Grass Energy. If he Choruses, he can get to uh, 11 in the Lost Zone. So then could simply Requiem here and not be forced to remove energy. Again, it kind of depends on whether or not he can start establishing a second Giratina or not. Even at this stage, he could try and close out the game with Crams and with uh, Sableyes, to be perfectly honest. So, looks like from the chorus, was able to find Nest Ball. That's certainly going to be an interesting piece of the puzzle. Yeah, the Manaphy goes as well as VIP. Uh, makes sense to get rid of Manaphy when you only have one Confei in play. They've been knocked out early from Jono, so you're much less worried about it. Uh, the Nest Ball is a little bit interesting. I think you have to go for the Tina here. Otherwise, you're falling prey to the Sableye and the Confer getting knocked out on the, on the same turn. Tim's actually just going to hold off on any Pokemon here. You can see a Water Energy attachment, which means Tim is just going to go for the Impact and keep the two energy on as well. This was the other option. Where you're basically saying that you have the Requiem online for next turn no matter what happens. Jono will be able to bounce Stadium here and will be able to use Laminion as well. So is most likely going to have to look to use Iono here. Yeah, that's the first thing that comes to the top of the deck. Uh, Jono will be able to, I think, throw some energy into play before this as well with Baxcalibur. It's going to try and put the water energy onto Laminion. Just a safe place to park it, I suppose. He's only getting four cards themselves, but does find the Ultra Ball, which is solid. Is he able to construct any sort of Chen Pao action here? Does still have the Pokestop Dig as well. May want to Ultra Ball first, but no, it's just going to go for the stop. Gets the VIP pass, which looks kind of bad, but it does give him an Ultra Ball discard. He's going to get rid of Cross Switcher in that VIP that was found. Chen Pao, I think there's only one water energy in the deck. So he's only at 240 right now with a Hail Blade. So he wouldn't be able to make that attack. Instead, it's just going to go, looks like for Bidoof, and just give himself a turn next turn and just hope that from the Iono, Tim can't gust is the plan. And Tim really is only threatening one attacker right now outside of Cram, so it seems pretty okay to do this line, I think. It's just going to pass. Oh, and Tim just has boss's orders <laughs> to close out the game. Not bad from the Iono there. Uh, yeah, really stuck in the mud a little bit there, Jono, from, I think, maybe a questionable Ultra Ball of not holding Iono in hand. I, it kind of makes sense because of Tim's uh, opening. Uh, but yeah, definitely an interesting game. The path to peak was definitely disruptive in that one. Uh, so we move on to the next one. The Chen Pao falling to the loser's bracket and Lost Zone Giratina carrying on in the winner's.